All right. Is this mic on yet? Can you hear? Yep. Okay, great. Uh, so I'm going to close out uh, the excellent summit today. I give my uh, usual talk that I gave last year as well. I'm Ben. I am work at Epic Games, but more importantly, I'm the chair of the Games Research and User Experience SIG. Uh, as is tradition, I have a cough because it's GDC time and that happens to me. So I please, sorry if I cough through this. Uh, okay, big things over the last year or so uh, is we became the Games Research and User Experience SIG rather than the Games User Research SIG. Um, this was kind of a, a big initiative from the steering committee where we wanted to be a little bit more welcoming to people who were telling us that because we w didn't have UX in our name that they didn't feel like they belonged uh, amongst us. And we felt, well, it's just the name so we can change it. Um, the most important thing is I can pay respects to Paragon and put Grux, our champion, up on slides. Okay, so let's look at some data. This is our growth of, of LinkedIn over the last three years. Uh, for those that don't know, the history of this group is we started as a LinkedIn group. Uh, over time, LinkedIn has become shit. And <laughs> we've moved away from it. And you can see that we've moved away from it in, well, three data points doesn't make a trend. But with three data points, you can see we're not growing uh, as much as LinkedIn as we used to. And that's while we do still offer LinkedIn as an option to talk to the organization, it's not as engaged. What is engaged is our Discord server. So this server was started uh, three years ago, and it has grown and grown every year. Uh, the growth has slowed down a little, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit, but it's still impressive, and it still seems to be, a, at the moment, a good way uh, for us to communicate with each other, ask questions, and share knowledge. <laughs> Another great initiative that the SIG runs is our, our Twitter, where a lot of things are shared. Uh, again, we've grown year on year. The growth is not so much from 2017 to 2018, but it's still impressive. It's only a few percentage points uh, off. And again, it's only three years data, but our tweets are up and our followers are up. Uh, there's Facebook. Um, only old people use Facebook. <laughs> so one thing I'd like to talk about is that we are part of the IGDA. Uh, you can go check out the IGDA here. And as part of the IGDA, uh, we do have a roundtable at GDC. So if you're going to GDC itself, uh, you can come around to that roundtable. It's like one of the last sessions on Friday, so nobody's going to be there. Um, and this year, we're trying something a little bit different. It's based on feedback we've received from members of this group. Uh, John, if you're here, probably just you. Um, that we weren't getting enough value for the experienced uh, researchers that were showing up there. So the goal this time is the roundtable is going to be split in half. Uh, if experienced people show up, they'll go to one half. If novices show up, they'll go to another. We'll have separate discussions, and then we'll come together and hopefully be able to share still a little bit at the end. <laughs> Uh, kind of the final part here is a, a general call to volunteer. Uh, the SIG is run as a volunteer organization. Uh, myself and the steering committee members are all volunteers. Uh, the chair position is only supposed to last one year. Last year, nobody volunteered, so I, I've done it again. Uh, but I'm not going to do it again this year. Uh, I have a baby on the way. I'm far too busy. Um, thank you. But I know <laughs> there's already excited people to step up into that role. And if you are one of those people, please do apply. Uh, there's also three steering committee member positions that will be available. That's a position that lasts for two years. And I'd also really encourage anybody who's uh, a UX designer that's here, uh, we need a little bit more representation on the steering committee of those groups as well as research. <laughs> so this next section is um, a thanks section. Uh, it's got pretty long this year, and I think that's uh, amazing. So I'd, I'd really like people to stand up. I'm not going to call out names because there's too many, but if you're here, please stand up, and uh, I'd like people to clap. So this is the core committee. Um, we have the directors and the leads. Please stand up if you're here. <laughs> All 
All right. We then have all the assistants also stand up. And even more, these are the volunteers. Volunteers, please stand up. And more, the content reviewers. And I realize I could put the speakers on here, but you got clapped for already. Uh, so now we've got um, GamesUR uh, 2020, and I'd like to bring the uh, two co-directors up on stage to talk about that briefly. Hi. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, sorry, I couldn't tell if the mic was on at first. <laughs> um, so I'm Jess Tompkins. I work for Bethesda Softworks, and I was the assistant director for this year's summit. And uh, the goal of having an assistant director is that eventually they'll be the actual director of the summit. Um, but I am very lucky to have Lainey <laughs> Dixon uh, co-chairing with me for 2020. Um, so I'm up here to just kind of discuss uh, a little background information on our uh, planning for the summit in 2020. So uh, what Nick had me do as the director for this year, he's like, Jess, uh, we need some research on where the summit is heading in the future. So he tasked me with doing a survey with the uh, broader GER and Grux community. Um, the survey response was not enormous, uh, had 49 responses to work with, 24 from the US, 16 from Canada, 9 from Europe. Uh, but basically the, the survey was just asking about thoughts concerning the location of the summit. You know, are you happy with it in San Francisco? What are your thoughts on it potentially being elsewhere in the US? What are your thoughts about it being in Canada? Um, so I just kind of took that feedback and we've been using that to sort of plan for 2020. Um, respondents overall were pretty positive about the idea of a rotating host city in North America, so this is something we'd like to explore. Um, San Francisco was seen as too expensive. Um, a lot of respondents who took the survey, and even if you didn't take the survey, I'm sure you can acknowledge this is an expensive uh, place to sort of host a conference, um, and it really does eat into our budget. Um, outside of San Francisco also is more convenient to the broader international community. Um, it's also a little more convenient for researchers who live outside of the West Coast. Um, of course, location of where the respondent was did impact their preference for a host city. Um, for example, if you were from America or U United States, you were more likely to say, let's have it in the US. If you were from Canada or Canada, there was some bias, like I want it to be in Canada. Um, not, not surprising, but I just thought I'd share that. Like it did impact the, the responses that I got in the survey. Um, but again, we're kind of looking into trying to make this summit more inclusive and more accessible to the broader user research community. Um, and then I did also ask about the timing of the event. Uh, we do not want to, of course, overlap with GDC because that would be kind of inconvenient for those of you who want to do both events. So um, what emerged is that May and June were sort of the ideal uh, times for people who responded to the survey. It's sort of the sweet spot just between uh, GDC and E3 for those working in user research. And I'm going to hand it over to Lainey, and she's got a big announcement to make concerning <laughs> we took all this feedback and we've come to a decision. Yes. For so, 2020. Jess and I have been working on this for several months, trying to figure out what to do with this data. We also took into consideration a survey that Ben had done a couple years back, looking at kind of how we wanted to move into the future, and we felt like now is the best time than ever. So Jess and I are very happy to present that we will now have North American Summit. <laughs> we officially invite you all to the first Games You Are North American Summit hosted in Montreal next May, 2020. So we have yet to confirm the venue. We are still working on that. We are working to confirm the dates. We are hoping to have all of this 
out to you guys by at least May, so you have a full year to make the plans and preparation. If you are looking to be a sponsor for this event, please reach out to Jess and I. If you are looking to be a volunteer for this event, please reach out to us. And we were gonna be, we're gonna try and communicate as much information as we can. We know this is something entirely new for our community, so we really appreciate your support. And if you guys have any questions, please let us know. Yeah, thank you. Okay, that's fantastic. Really looking forward to seeing uh, how this goes. Okay, more thanks. Back to thanks. Um, I also, we also have a European summit, so I really want to uh, thank the European summit committee members if multiple of them are here so they can stand up and we can clap for them as well. And uh, that's a Brexit joke. Do you get it for now? Yeah. Yep. Good, great, um, cool. Uh, I also want to give thanks to the, uh, the steering committee members and all our mentors and volunteers that help the, the SIG to function. So please also stand up if you're on the steering committee and you're here. And of course, final thanks to all of you. You can stand up and clap for yourself if you want. Uh, really, we couldn't do this stuff without you, and, and it's super valuable to us. All right, um, kind of final thing is it's now time to go be social. Uh, we have our event <coughs> at the Cigar Bar and Grill on Montgomery Street. Uh, the bar is until we close the private tab, but then afterwards we can stick around. It's just then the tab is over. Uh, you have to bring your badges to get access to that. It's also a, a 21 plus only event. Sorry about that uh, for those who, who can't attend because of that. There'll be um, <coughs> some food there, uh, but the place is also a, a restaurant. So if you feel like uh, the food that is there isn't enough, you can p buy and pay for your own food at the restaurant that's attached. Uh, so thank you again, everybody, and thanks for coming.